Let's look at Tesla. First off, read this disclaimer carefully and do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. We can find Tesla under the megatrend called electric vehicles. We can see here when we look at the average performance, it's a monstrous outperformance vis-a-vis -vis the S&P 500. Uh, if we go here to sectors uh, and let's here look at um, uh, the autonomous and electric vehicles ETF, you know, called DRIV, 182% uh, from the lows. Yeah. So basically, huge, huge moves here. Uh, the thing is that uh, these companies are, you know, pure-ish play electric vehicles. And Tesla, of course, is one of them. Extreme performance. Uh, the thing is, okay, is that when it comes to electric uh, vehicles, uh, it's a bit tricky. Because there are two... Uh, primary kinds of investing. One thing is to invest in the vehicles, and there's a bunch of vehicles here. Another thing is in the charging stations. Because uh, the paradox for, you know, the manufacturers of electric vehicles is that as charging stations become more ubiquitous, um, you know, they are going to become so ubiquitous that you do not really need to have an electric vehicle with amazing range. And hence, when it comes to Tesla, you know, they make, you know, some of the best electric vehicles. But maybe in the future, you don't actually need the best. Uh, even though the alternatives have inferior range, inferior in all kinds of ways, they are good enough. That's a kind of situation that could develop. That would be, you know, uh, bearish for Tesla. Uh, let's quickly look here at the seasonality of, uh, of Tesla. You can see that January is actually one of the stronger months. But it, but it does mean that there is weakness here around the corner. So that's something to be a bit aware of. Let's quickly look here. Now, we don't have much uh, data on Driv anyway. Okay, so here is the chart for Tesla. Um, within this entire time frame, it is up, um, you know, twenty one thousand percent. Obviously, huge uh, bullish uh, move, uh, big, big time. It's also quite clear that, um, you know, the big move has been relatively recent. Uh, it's it's been consolidating for you know protracted period, and then it had you know this monstrous, monstrous uh, breakout. Of course, the assumption here is that. Tesla will have a very big portion of the electric vehicle market. To be perfectly clear, I am a huge fan of the Tesla cars. Uh, I think Elon Musk is a transportation prodigy. There's many reasons to be bullish on Elon Musk being able to make the best electric vehicles, the best artificial intelligence. But if you think about uh, gasoline cars, uh, the cars you see out there on the road, you know, you do not see the best brand dominate. Arguably, uh, the gasoline vehicles from Rolls-Royce are the best. Rolls-Royce engines are in planes, they are in, in you know, massive uh, ships, uh, you know, tankers. Rolls-Royce make amazing engines. They are vastly superior to others. But you don't need a Rolls Royce engine in your car, so that is that is a potential problem in the future for Tesla. Maybe uh, the Toyota, BMW, Kia, Nissan, you name it, Honda. Maybe their electric cars are just going to be good enough, and that the better investment might be looking at the charging stations, because that's going to be, be, be built out and very necessary. So, so that's something to think a bit about. Okay, anyway, here is the chart, a uh, huge move. Uh, so strong, uh, bulls are in control, but you know we are seeing some pullback today. Uh, looking here at the daily data points. Let's zoom out a bit. So here you can see quite clearly that the, the dramatic move, it w did happen quite uh, recently. 
And Elon Musk, uh, you know, he has become, uh, because of this, uh, the richest man on the planet. Uh, we do see here that there are buyers supporting here on the accumulation dis distri distribution uh, line. So, so there is bullishness there. Uh, RSI, uh, it's been a bit lofty, but it is able to be lofty. 93% uh, strong correlation with S&P 500. And it has become a component of the S&P 500. Which means that it will, uh, you know, it, it, it basically then becomes uh, more... The case that the case that Tesla will move in lockstep, uh, just as a function of it being subject to you know the selling and the buying of um, the S and P. That's just how the, that mechanic works. Hence, the price uh, action dynamics uh, it does actually very much change when you become a component of such a major index. So, looking at this chart, I would say that. You know, this is not necessarily the best time to uh, to buy uh, Tesla. Uh, I think that there could be some uh, decent uh, shorting opportunities actually on the horizon. Uh, when we look here at uh, the distance from uh, the 200 day moving average, so this is the entire history daily data points. We see that, uh, you know, back here and here and here, are the times where we have been even more excessively away from that key moving average. So let's actually draw some lessons from the past. Uh, what happened when we were very far away? So you see that we did see some increase here, but then we did actually have a very major pullback eventually. If we zoom in here to the more recent uh, developments, like here, extreme distance from that moving average, we form a double top and then we did actually have a very major uh, pullback. So how big actually was that uh, pullback? It was uh, a pretty, wow, minus 60%. That's pretty substantial. If you look uh, here also, some big distance and we did see some pullback. Uh, let's measure that one as well. It certainly looks a lot smaller. Yeah, 15, 16-ish uh, percent here as well. We did uh, have a pullback and even though we're not that far away now, it, you, you could make the case that ever since here back in February, looking at the highs here, you know, when it comes to the distance, investors have become a bit more cautious. So that's something to be aware of. Looking here at um, the analyst uh, price target, you can see that uh, they suggest a minus 45% downside. That's big. Uh, Sachs.com, they do have a strong buy, but F value, A growth and F uh, momentum. And there's no dividend. Okay, so I need to be a bit quicker. So to sum up my take here on Tesla, I am very bullish on the theme electric vehicles, uh, but you do have this uh, distinction between distinction between those who make the vehicles and those who make the charging stations. Uh, I do think that charging stations, um, that's going to be a very big uh, growth opportunity as you know the vehicles become more ubiquitous, as the charging stations become more common, you are going to have the, the issue uh, for Tesla in that, in the, to the extent that you don't really need an electric vehicle with amazing range. You can have a very mediocre uh, vehicle and do fine. Like we see with gasoline cars, you do not need the most amazing engine. You can have a very, very mediocre engine and do fine. So, that, so that's a potential challenge here for Tesla. Looking at the fundamentals, uh, the stock is definitely very far away at this point, uh, like in a very big way. Um, so even though I'm, I'm I'm very bullish on Elon Musk as a person, I do think that uh, you know there's good reason to expect uh, some um, rougher times uh, for the bulls going forward. It simply is just too excessive at this point. Having said that, uh, Tesla has been ravaging uh, bears for quite some time. It's a very difficult stock to short and to be profitable. And if you if you are going to successfully short Tesla, you will have amazing bragging rights. These extreme highs um, does push me more in at least for a short for the temporary time frame more in a bearish. Uh, yeah, my, my bear uh, radar is uh, definitely more active than my bull radar on Tesla at this specific point.